let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. The miraculous conversion of St. Paul is one of the most striking testimonies to the truth of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his glorious risen life with us in the church. Saul, who is also called Paul, was among the fiercest persecutors of the first disciples of our Lord. We think, for instance, of his participation in and approval of the stoning of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. As we heard in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, he was in fact on his way to, D to Damascus in order to seek the arrest and imprisonment of Christians when our Lord radically transformed his life. A risen Lord appeared to St. Paul as a light from the sky, a great light from heaven. A risen Lord also spoke to him, clearly identified himself with the disciples whom Saul was persecuting, and at the same time called him to discipleship. A risen Lord declared to St. Paul, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. In the meantime, our Lord appeared to Ananias, one of the first disciples at Damascus, instructing him to go to Saul in order to assist him in receiving baptism. A risen Lord asked Ananias to be the instrument by which he would fill the soul of St. Paul with the grace of his own spirit, the Holy Spirit. Ananias was understandably afraid of Saul, given his altogether justified reputation as a fierce persecutor of the disciples. But our Lord reassured him, go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and Israelites, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. Ananias then went immediately to visit Saul. He laid hands upon him and baptized him. St. Paul, coming to life in Christ through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, from that moment became the apostle to the nations, tirelessly traveling to the non-Jewish peoples to teach the faith and bring the sacraments. And finally, pouring out his life in martyrdom by beheading in Rome. St. Paul's teaching, which has reached his, the succeeding generations of our Lord's disciples, including ourselves today, through his divinely inspired letters, is for us a remarkable sign of the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our eternal salvation, rose from the dead, is seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, and continues to be alive for us in the church. Our risen Lord truly meets us in the church, as he met Saul on the road to Damascus, and he gives us a mission in the world. Through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into our souls, by means of the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, and through the healing and strengthening of the grace of the Holy Spirit within us, 
by means of the forgiveness of our sins and the sacrament of penance and the nourishment of the life of the Holy Spirit in our souls with the heavenly food of his true body, blood, soul, and divinity in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, our risen Lord, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, is also truly with us, faithfully pouring out his very life for us and strengthening us to pour out our lives for our brothers and sisters. In his discourse on the bread of life, a small part of which has just been proclaimed to us, our Lord makes clear the wonderful truth of our communion with him in his risen body through the Eucharistic sacrifice. He declares, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. The risen Christ comes to meet us in the church above all in the Holy Eucharist. He identifies himself with us, especially in our suffering for the sake of doing the will of the Father. He confirms us in our mission to bring his life to the world, and he strengthens us for the mission with the heavenly bread of his very body, blood, soul, and divinity. We have life because of him. Celebrating the baccalaureate mass of Franciscan University, I think of St. Francis of Assisi of how Christ, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, met him in the church, identifying himself with the suffering church and giving him a mission. In his testament, St. Francis recalls how our Lord led him to recognize and embrace our Lord in the lepers who before had been abhorrent to his sight. After his conversion to Christ, St. Francis of Assisi was remarkable for his great devotion to the Holy Eucharist and to the Holy Priesthood, the sacrament by which Christ continues to make present his Eucharistic sacrifice for us. It was through the Holy Eucharist that St. Francis received the grace to love as Christ loves, without boundary. It was through the Holy Eucharist that St. Francis was able to recognize Christ in the lepers and to embrace them with unconditional love. Reflecting, in fact, upon his practice of reverence, love, and honor toward priests, St. Francis wrote, I do this because in this world I cannot see the Most High Son of God with my own eyes except for his most holy body and blood which they receive and they alone administer to others. In the Holy Eucharist and in the Holy Priesthood, St. Francis saw the mystery of God's pure and selfless love for us ceaseless and without measure. Through the Holy Eucharist, St. Francis not only learned the mystery of divine love, but was given the grace to love others with the same love, untiringly and without boundary. The living encounter with Christ in the church inspired the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi whenever entering a church, a prayer which we continue to pray today. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, 
here and in all your churches in the world. And we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Adoring our Lord in the most blessed sacrament, we embrace with him every brother and sister. We take up with him the cross by which he offered his life for the salvation of the world. With St. Paul, St. Francis of Assisi, and all of the saints, down the Christian centuries, we recognize Christ standing in our midst. Christ, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, is alive for us in the church. From his glorious, pierced heart, ever thirsting for our love, he unceasingly and immeasurably pours out divine mercy and love for us in the church, in her teaching, in her sacraments, and in her discipline. Christ invites us to surrender our hearts to him and to find in his glorious pierced heart the purification of our sins and the strength to love as he loves purely and selflessly. In the only safe harbor for our hearts, which is his sacred heart, Christ gives us the gift of his own spirit, the Holy Spirit, who purifies us of sin and inspires in us every good and holy thought, word, and deed. The Holy Spirit dwelling within our hearts makes our hearts like the heart of Jesus so that from our hearts there flow rivers, rivers of living water for all our brothers and sisters, especially those in most need. The celebration of the Holy Mass on the occasion of the baccalaureate of Franciscan University fills our hearts with gratitude for all the ways in which Christ is alive in the hearts of our beloved graduates, to dispel the darkness of falsehood and hatred in our world with the undying light of divine truth and love. Praying for our graduates, we thank God today for the great gift of Catholic education, of education inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit. We pray that as they have been led through their education at Franciscan University to cultivate the faith and right reason, to make their minds and hearts one with the mind and heart of Christ, so will they continue to seek Christ who meets them in the church and confirms them in their mission as his disciples, co-workers with him for the salvation of our world. We pray that they will seek always to have communion with our Lord by means of the sacraments, above all, the Holy Eucharist and penance, and so will at every moment of their daily living Love God and neighbor as he loves, purely and selflessly. Contemplating once again the great good of a truly Catholic education, we pray also for God's continued blessing upon Franciscan University so that it will continue to be a school of the Holy Spirit, a school in which the Holy Spirit is steadfastly at work leading the entire university community to meet our Lord and to receive its mission from him. We pray that Franciscan University will remain ever strong in its vision to offer a dynamic Catholic curriculum integrating faith and reason in an environment in which students, faculty, and staff seek ongoing personal conversion in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit indeed works within us and in our community for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Most powerfully of all in the Eucharistic sacrifice which we are now about to, in which we are now about to participate. The Holy Spirit makes present once again for us the sacrifice on Calvary, the sacrifice of Christ, by which alone we are saved. The glorious heart of Jesus, pierced on Calvary by the Roman soldier's spear, pours forth ever anew, pours forth now, the blood and water of his life given up for us. Through his Eucharistic sacrifice, Christ, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, invites us to place our hearts into his heart, to be cleansed, and to be inflamed for love of God and of our neighbor. The Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, leads us now with all our needs and the needs of the world to her divine son with the maternal counsel which she gave to the wine stewards at the wedding feast at Cana. Do whatever he tells you. Drawing our hearts to her immaculate heart, she teaches us with the purest maternal love to place our hearts completely into the heart of Jesus as he offers his life in pure and selfless love of God and of all men. As we celebrate her feast today under her title of Our Lady of Fatima, we recall with particular gratitude her maternal care of the blessed Pope John Paul II when 30 years ago today an assassin attempted to take his life. Our Lord Jesus stands ready now to meet us in his Eucharistic sacrifice, to receive our hearts into his glorious pierced heart, purifying and strengthening our hearts with his own body and blood, soul and divinity, for the mission which he has confided to each of us. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us give our hearts to him now and always for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Heart of Jesus, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of America, and Star of the New Evangelization, pray for us. Saint Francis, Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. Saint Francis of Assisi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.